Yo, it's me, it's me, C-S-C-O-T-T, -T, baby, and I'm here with my, here to talk about night one of WrestleMania, so let's talk about it. Woo! Okay, so, uh, first we'll start with the pre-show match, it was Drew Gulak versus Cesaro. Cesaro won, shockingly, but he won, and so, you know, put a point for that. I, I didn't pick anything out of that, but I'm just saying, Cesaro, I want Cesaro to win. I like Cesaro. I wish he would have more wins, but, you know. And they start the real pit review. And the first match of the night was the um, Women's Tag Team Championship match. Kabuki Warriors versus Alexa Bliss. And Nikki Cross. And it was a decent match. There was a moment in the match where... Uh, the Kabuki Warriors started yelling in Japanese at the empty crowd. And I'm like, what? Why? There's no one there. I understand they're trying to keep the illusion. I mean, th this whole build has been really stupid to WrestleMania. They won't mention anything about the virus. They won't mention why the Miz... They, the Miz wasn't there, and it just didn't mention him. He says, the Miz is not here. That's all they said. And, you know, they didn't mention why Roman Reigns was gone. I keep burping. I wouldn't mention anything. It's, I understand they're trying to keep it, you know, close, but it's fucking stupid. It's absolutely stupid. Just tell us the truth. Don't try to sugarcoat it for us. We're big boys. We can deal with it, okay? But Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross won after Nikki Cross hit that swinging neckbreaker thing on, I think it was Kyrie Sane. And Alexa Bliss did a little flip thingy. One, two, three. Yeah, because, um, Oscar was taken out after she speared the ring post. And yeah, it was a decent first match. It was a little weird, but you're get, we're getting used to it. So, trying to get used to what's going on. Number two was Elias versus Baron Corbin. And Baron Corbin came out, or King Corbin came out and said to declare him the winner because <clears throat> Elias wasn't there, but Elias showed up. And here, if they weren't going to do something with that spot where he fell off the balcony, then why even do it? Because here I thought they were going to substitute someone in. Jeff Hardy would have been a good idea. And maybe they were going to do that. And then Jeff Hardy said, no, I'm not going to come in. I don't know. But Jeff Hardy would have been a better idea. That spot was pointless otherwise. You know, having him fall off the thing is pointless. Just pointless. But Elias won uh, after Corbin tried to use the ropes to his advantage. The referee caught it, and she said no, and then uh, um, Elias rolled up Corbin. We had the tights or the pants, whatever, and one, two, three, and Elias wins. So that's two points for me. And then we had the bullshit match of the night. I could have had a perfect night if it wasn't for this match because it's the only match I got wrong in the entire night so far, and that's Becky Lynch versus Shayna Baszler. And Becky Lynch won. I didn't see how she won because I was on the phone at the time. But she won. I heard ding, ding, ding. You know, what are and still Raw Women's Champion Becky Lynch. And this is a, a casualty, I'm sure of it, of there not being a crowd. They just said, oh, we're not going to change that. But they should have. They should have. And I hope they don't screw Drew McIntyre over because of this stupid bullshit going on. All right? It's his moment. We're going to be pissed. But... Megan Lynch won. Can't do nothing about it. One point down. But I've done all right. You know, after that. The fourth match tonight was Sami Zayn versus Daniel Bryan. And there was some commotion on the outside between Drew Gulak and the other two members of the Artist Collective or something like whatever they call themselves. And uh, Sami Zayn won with a big halluva kick to the face. And then one, two, three. It was... Pretty big Kaluva kick, but yeah. One, two, three, and he won. Retain a title. <clears throat> the next match, number five, was a triple threat match, which ended up being John Morrison versus Kofi versus Jimmy Uso. And I know I said I would pick Kofi Kingston, but it was still for the tag title, so I had to keep my previous pick. So, the finish, it was a pretty good match. There was... You know, ladder spots and everything. And there was one... Uh, there was a couple of times where like, you can hear them yelling. Like, the, for instance, one time Jimmy Uso yelled at Kofi. Eat that, Kofi! 
It's really weird with no sound. They keep switching in. By the way, the commentary teams was for Raw, it was uh, Tom Phillips and Byron Saxon. And for SmackDown, it was Michael Cole and JBL. It was really weird. Uh, yeah. Um, and of course, Rob Gronkowski and Mojo Rawley were doing stuff throughout the night, doing the host gig stuff. It was kind of stupid, but, uh, were we on? Oh yeah, the ladder match. So, um, the finish was kind of weird. All three of them were up on the ladders. They all grabbed the titles and then Kofi and Jimmy, uh, went to knock John Morrison down. And when he went down, he grabbed both the titles and f they fell down with him. And then they called that as he won the match. I hate those kind of finishes. They did that once with uh, it was Ultimate X, and it was wasn't kind of, it was kind of like that where uh, I can't remember who was in. I think it was Petey Williams and some other guy, whatever. But one of the guys they were fighting over it, and the the Ultimate X the X fell and hit the ground, and one of the guys jumped down, grabbed it, <laughs> and or went and grabbed it, and they called that a win. I, was, I, th I think it was Michael Shane. I think was the guy. I don't know. But it was just... I remember that being a weird finish. And this was a weird finish too. But they said John Morrison won and I picked him. So, you know. And we had Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins. And that match was pretty good until we had the first finish. And by first finish, I mean it was a disqualification. Uh, Seth Rollins grabbed the ring bell and hit Kevin Owens upside the head. Ding! And they called it a disqualification, but Kevin Owens got in a microphone and said, no, no, this is best media. We can end it like that. We can end it like that. And uh, so they restarted the match, no disqualifications, and no count outs too, I guess. And they went head to head, and the finish was uh, Kevin Owens did a elbow drop off the WrestleMania logo, which was up pretty high, onto Seth Rollins on the announce table, I think, or something. And then he rolled him in the ring, hit him with a stunner. One, two, three. Kevin Owens won. Another point for me. Number seven was Goldberg versus Braun Strowman. Oh, boy. This was probably the worst match of the night. The way it was constructed, at least. It's a Goldberg match. Match started. Spear to Braun Strowman. Got back up. Another spear. Get back up again. One more spear. One, two, kick out. Uh, and then he goes for another spear. And he gets him up. Goes for... I, I think there's a four spear. I don't know. He, he, he goes to hit him with the jackhammer. Braun Strowman reverses. Then Braun Strowman hits him with three, power, three or four power slams. And then one, two, three. Braun Strowman is your new United States... United States. Universal Champion. Uh, yeah, I predicted it, but I didn't think they were actually going to go through with it. People were saying, oh, Goldberg's not going to lose now that uh, Roman Reigns isn't in the, is in the match anymore. That's not going to happen. Stro uh, he'll retain and then Roman will beat him when he, when he comes back. Nope. I told you all, it was a short-term plan. Goldberg was losing to whoever he was going to face, which makes me want it to be Jeff Hardy even more. I know Jeff Hardy's not on the card, but... Come on, Jeff Hardy could have been squeezed in. Why Braun Strowman? I think Braun shouldn't ever have a championship because he's a big guy. The, who's, the only one who can beat him now is Roman Reigns. That's why it's so predictable. You know, someone like Jeff Hardy or even Baron Corbin couldn't beat him. I think Roman Reigns is the only one that could be a, a, appropriate to beat him. But anyway, now we have the main event. The eighth match of the night. And Undertaker vs. AJ Styles in the Boneyard match. And we... It's the best match of the night. I'm telling you right now, it was the best match of the night. And we had the the Undertaker's theme started playing. Dong, and the song started playing. This hearse drove into the boneyard. Two druids came out. They went pulled out a casket. You open it up, and inside was AJ Styles. AJ Styles' music started playing. And then he was all ready to go. And then you heard... <clears throat> And then the music played. It was Metallica. Not, you done it now, which is what it should have been. But they decided we're just going to pump in some Metallica song. Other than give us what we want, which was, you done it now. 
But the match more made up for it because this was balls to the walls. They're going at it. First thing AJ Styles wants to do is picks up picks up a rock. It's just to hit Undertaker with it. It doesn't work. They're going head to head, bone to bone, and he takes out AJ, knocks him down. He and but then the other two guys they come in and they beat the crap, and then um, they start to get in fight, and then they uh, he backs up against the, this barn, and the lights pop on, falls down, a bunch of druids surround them, and they're you know. He fights them off, and then the druids just disappear, and then he beats up them, and he goes back to AJ, and it gets to the point where AJ actually gets them to take it down, throws them in the the grave, and goes up to pull the thing, and this was the best part of the match. He goes up into the the, uh, big shovel thing, turns the key, gets ready to do it, and all of a sudden, light flashes behind him, and the Undertaker is standing behind him. The, you know, pre-taped. The advantages of pre-taped. And then there's more fight, and they get up on the roof of this barn thing they were on before. And all three of them are up there, and he he throws Gallows off the damn roof. He tombstones um, Anderson on the roof, and then he choke slams AJ off the roof, and then grabs him. And he, he stands him up, and he kicks him into the, the grave, and then he goes up, restarts the thing with, who turned it off? Did AJ turn it off before he started getting beat up? I don't, I don't know. He turns it back on, pulls the lever, it buries him, and they, this was kind of cheesy, but they showed it back to the grave, and they showed AJ's hand sticking out, which was just incredibly cheesy, but I liked it, and then Undertaker got his bike, Metallica started playing again, he drove off. WrestleMania card thing popped up. That was the end of the night. All in all, not bad for a first night. Um, although they did pick some of their, you know, there was some good match. Like Shannon Baszler and Becky Lynch was a good choice. They had one, cha- they had a, you know, one World Championship match, you know, Universal. But most of their other big matches that maybe Alistair Black and Bobby Lashley and the Raw Tag Team Championship match are going to be tomorrow. They're all going to be tomorrow, but it's like. I only got one wrong. I only picked one wrong so far. But that's one night. What what disappointed me is that Otis and Ziggler is going to be tomorrow. I wanted to see that match so bad. I want Otis to crush Dolph Ziggler and then I want him to crush. Smash Dolph Ziggler and then smash. But uh, yeah, that's my review for part one. I'll be doing a review for part two. As you can tell, no shaving cream. And uh, because the match is tomorrow, which I figured. I, after I said, uh, if, you do, if you don't know, I, I sent a tweet out saying that because I had to record my predictions three times. Once because the camera went out. The second time because I forgot to add the Randy Orton and Edge match. So, And then the third time I forgot to add the stipulation because I, I made it in the second video and I forgot to add the stipulation in the third one. If... Because I picked Rhea Ripley to win, the, and to retain the NXT Women's Championship. And I said, if Charlotte Flair wins, I'm going to cover my face with shaving cream and do the review of that night. So, you'll see tomorrow, if Charlotte Flair wins, I will do the review with shaving cream all over my face. God, I hope she doesn't win. But yeah, uh, so, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow for part two. Till then, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.